Thursday. How's everybody doing today? Friday Eve. Payday Friday Eve. So I'm excited about that. Um, today, I did find another story I'm excited about. Um, so I'm going to start that. And then, of course, we've got to do our spooky advent calendar which really hasn't been spooky it's just been more fun than anything but like i said before um next halloween it's going to be something something different we should be moved and settled into the house by then so maybe i can do some decorating and dressing up and just make it a little bit more fun but this has been fun the stories of what's been fun because i've learned a lot um i've learned about new serial killers and i thought i had i knew all of them i watch all crime shows constantly my husband's like why do you watch so many crime shows you plan on killing me hmm. <laughs> no okay so we are on 24 and it's right here he says you watch all those crime shows you can murder me and get away with it you really can't they always come back and get you whether it's a phone they trace your phone so you can't have any you can't take your phone with you or they trace your shoe prints they trace your tire prints um they always come back one case um that was a case in california he um and i might have i might cover that too just come up it came it just popped into my head and i might see if i can you know I mean, i'm not gonna be able to read this story because it'll be too long but maybe i can condense it down and let you guys know about it um this guy goes out of town i think on a goes out of town on a business trip rents a car, drives all the way back to murder his family, and then drives back. So that way he would have an alibi. And what got him caught was the bugs. Um, it showed that he rented a car, how many miles he drove, and the bugs from each state. So they figure it out. There's no perfect murder. You're going to get caught one way or another. So, it's a pumpkin, and it, I don't know why I always try and read it without my glasses. What do you get when you drop a pumpkin? Squash. And the numbers still, even taking those off, the numbers are still very hard. What I thought about doing is taking a red pen and just writing over it. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's something that I might do just because it did happen here in California. Well, there's a lot of serial killers that's happened in California, but this is one I just thought of. Um, it's called the Vincent Brothers case. And with me working in the legal field, I had a chance to um, read and see some documentation from that case and man it'll just give you the chills so yeah I'll go over that um maybe I'll go over that next week I might do that save that for like towards the end the end of the month maybe and then um it'll be a longer video that way to give me time to research um more about the case and see what I can find on it that I'm able to link below so you guys can read about it but it's an interesting case he was a principal at a at a school so um, it's, it's sad all the way around because the entire family got murdered and you know he didn't get he didn't get a buy with it he's in jail so okay so for today's story Um, it's Small called Town. 
vigilante justice in 1907. So I hope you guys enjoy this story. Um, this week's stories are not going to be very long and then we'll continue on um, next week. Um, I'll probably do just a couple of short stories from Monday, Tuesday since I'm going to be gone. Um, and maybe I can do some stories um, on the way. I don't know. I'll see if we'll any when we're traveling if there's anything that's interesting along the way and we can just film it and kind of go with the crime that way i don't know i'll figure it out so all right guys i hope you enjoy this story's coming up next small town vigilante justice in 1907 a farmhand working for the Koppel family near rosalie nebraska got drunk one saturday night in may of 1907 and just decided to kill his employers Walter and Eva Koppel. After Loris Higgins, using the alias Fred Burke, grabbed a shotgun and went outside, he called for Walter to come out of the house. When he did, he shot the farmer with both barrels. When Eva came running out to help her husband, he fired both barrels at her while the couple's seven children watched in horror. Higgins then stole $900 from his employer sexually assaulted the couple's 13-year-old daughter and threw the bodies of his victims into a hog pen where the pigs disfigured their corpses. He then saddled up a mule and rode off. Higgins was captured one day later and held in the county jail in Omaha, Nebraska. When he was being transported to Pender, Nebraska, the county seat of Thurston County, where the crime took place, he was accosted by a vigilante mob when his train reached Bancroft, Nebraska, which is 11 miles from Pender. Loris Higgins, alias Fred Burke, who shot and killed Mr. and Mrs. Walter Koppel, farmers of Rosalie, Nebraska, near the Iowa border, May 12th, was lynched one mile from the town by a mob of 20 masked men. Higgins reached Bancroft, seven miles from Rosalie, on the northwestern train in custody of Sheriff Sid Young of Thurston County and a deputy at 8.37 a.m. from Omaha while he had been confined in the Douglas County Jail since his arrest soon after the murder. The masked men met the train, brushed the sheriff and his deputy to one side, threw a rope around the murderer's neck, and led him forth. He was placed in a wagon and hauled to the Logan Bridge one mile west of town where the lynching was performed. The rope was tied to the highest beam of the bridge, and after the victim made a statement, he was thrown by the mob into the air and reached the end of the rope with a terrible sound, snapping his neck and producing instant death. Forty bullets were then shot into his body, which was left dangling in the air for the officers to care for while the executioners unmasked themselves and scattered in all directions in the timber which skirt the scene of the lynching. The whole affair was performed with little excitement and was over before most of the people of Bancroft knew it was contemplated. Sheriff Young, finding himself confronted by a resolute mob of masked men, offered no forcible resistance to taking the prisoner. The sheriff was visibly affected by the demonstration, far more so than was Higgins. Higgins appeared little concerned, and when the rope, which was to send him to his death in a few minutes, was slipped over his head, he did not even flush or move, but stepped slightly from the train to the platform, surrounded by the mass crowd. He prayed as he alighted, and continued his prayer until the train had gone and he was loaded into a wagon which was standing conveniently by. The sheriff's deputy pulled his revolver when the mob appeared. The men told him to put up his gun, and when he refused, they knocked it out of his hand and knocked the deputy down and told him not to be foolish. None of the mob had much to say to the victim, and he was not assaulted until the bridge was reached. At the bridge, after the rope was tied and just before he was thrown into the air, he was given permission to make a statement. He availed himself of the opportunity 
saying he had long ago repented for his terrible deed, that he had made his peace with God and was now ready to go and face him. Feeling that all would be well hereafter, he said he had tried to atone for his wanton murder, but had no excuse to offer, as he had no excuse for committing it. He reavowed his faith in the religion he had found through the help of a good woman in Omaha who came to his cell and prayed with him. He asked God to bless the little children whom he had left without parents by his deed and then to the masked men around him. I requested that a note be sent. His mother asked her to write to his father at Nanta, Idaho. The possibility of finding out the names of those who form the mob is exceedingly remote. No one is standing on street corners condemning them nor professing that he knows a single man who engaged in the affair. So far as Sheriff Young is concerned, he does not appear to know them. Thurston County authorities declare that they have proof that Higgins mistreated the 13-year-old daughter. Um, at the end, it says there is more reading. I will see if I can copy and paste it and, and attach it. Um, right here is also a map of Bancroft, Rosalie, and Pender. There is also a picture of him hanging. And then I believe this is the mob. Says before and after pictures of the lynching of Loris Ray Higgins in Bancroft, Nebraska in August 1907 were made by an unknown Bancroft photographer for sale as stereo views above posse of mask farmers gathers at the station to await. And I will try and see if I can copy and paste these and put those put those as well. What do you guys think of that story? Um, I had to read it a couple times because I was a little bit confused. It seems like from the time he committed the murder to the time that he was lynched was pretty quick. So going back and reading... If I got this right, he he committed the murders on May 10th. He was arrested on May 11th and he was lynched on the 12th. So that was only three days. But at the bottom, after the after they got him, the mob, you know, got him and took him to the bridge. You know, they asked if he wanted in, uh, if he had a statement, if he wanted to say a statement. He said that he had already asked for forgiveness and that he learned of his religion from a good woman, good woman, um, who came to visit him in his cell. So she had to come and visit him on the 11th, the day before he was lynched. That's crazy. But yeah, I mean, it was a small, it was a, it was a short story, but it was a good story. So what do you guys think about that? Um, that's it for today, and I'm going to start looking for another one for tomorrow. I hope you guys are enjoying these. Um, I'm finding out a lot of good stuff. My husband was actually here um, because he brought me my Dr. Pepper, like I said earlier. And he was telling me about a story. I'm going to try and see if I can find it tomorrow. Um, kind of about, kind of like today, um, a father who went after somebody who uh, did stuff to his son, I believe. But anyway, if I can't find it or whatever, I'll just continue with these from this um, history crime detective. Seems like, I mean, I'm enjoying it just because it's old history. And um, some of them are pretty good. Some of them are very hard to read. And the words that they use, I just don't understand. So I'm going back and forth trying to get the meanings of the word. Alright guys, that's it for today and I will be back tomorrow 
Friday, payday Friday for me, um, with another story. And I think I'm going to try and uh, squeeze in a Timu haul today. We'll see. There are some that I had already opened and hauled, but I accidentally deleted the video. So I thought that I could try and squeeze it in. We'll see. Cross your fingers I can get it done. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye.